This is Valley News Live at 6. This morning, a gentleman approached me as I was filling up the truck with fuel, and he shook my hand, and he says, the world's going to hell. <laughs> and he asked for a bumper sticker. The battle over new policies and proclamations regarding bathroom use by transgender individuals continues to heat up. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. You might have seen this truck outside the Moorhead Target store this morning. It's part of a campaign protesting the retail chain's new bathroom policy, allowing transgender people to use whichever bathroom they identify with. And state officials are wading into the fray as well, criticizing new federal mandates. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric has the story. What about her rights to privacy and protection? It's the message sprawled across a truck making its way to every single Target store in Minnesota. It doesn't have to be this way. I mean, it, it, there's some natural safeguards in a system that recognizes biological sex. The campaign's website, FlushTarget.com, is part of LifeSite News, a Christian value nonprofit that says Target's policy is dangerous. This is not about the transgender people. And as the, as the billboard on the side of the truck illustrates, we're concerned about the safety and privacy of women and children. That's the issue. And by all accounts, Target is already feeling the pinch. The company has reportedly lost billions in sales following boycotts and outrage over the policy change. I, I would hate to say they would have to have their own bathroom, but that is the quick fix. President Obama's guidance issued to schools nationwide where he wants transgender students to be able to Good use the bathroom everybody. of the gender they most identify with has drawn sharp criticism from top North Dakota officials. Governor Jack Dalrymple said, quote, President Obama's directive is another example of federal overreach. And North Dakota Superintendent of Public Instruction Kirsten Baszler echoed the governor, saying this is a local issue best determined by local districts. Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton's office has not yet returned our calls asking whether he supports President Obama's school bathroom mandates. A Christine woman is thankful and also counting down the days until she can shower in her own home. We first told you about Dolores Kramlik last April when she contacted our whistleblower hotline after paying a friend $1,200 to remodel her bathroom in February of last year. Her friend started the work, took the money, and then left her without a working sink toilet and leaky plumbing. Valley News Live investigated and got Kramlich's money back, but for more than a year, she has been taking sponge baths and was left with an unfinished bathroom until now. Bell State Bank, along with the FM Home Builders Association, are remodeling Kramlich's bathroom. The groups say, or rather, they saw her story and wanted to help. Contractors gutted the entire bathroom, and it should be completed by Monday. I think, I, I think I'm going to take a shower as soon as it's installed. <laughs> we can offer our assistance, you know, this is something that we, we do for a living and, you know, we have a skill for it. So if we can help somebody that needs it, it's, it's humbling for us. This project is being completed by several organizations in the FM area that are donating their time, money, and supplies. Again, Dolores was able to get her money back and her story out there after working with our investigative team and the whistleblower hotline. So if you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, give us a call at 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. What a day. Beautiful out there today and little or no wind. Hutch, can our wonderful viewers continue to expect the same tonight? Indeed, it looks beautiful out there as our calm winds and temperatures in the 70s continue here in the valley. A lot of mid-60s and uh, uh, low 60s out to the east. Look at these wind speeds, calm to 5 miles per hour. We can manage that as we head through the evening tonight. Your Fargo area planner shows temperatures will be generally in the 60s until we get past sunset at 9 o'clock. Then we'll drop off into the 50s. Our weather is very dry and that pattern for the most part will continue. But the wind and our chance of storms will return. All the details on when you can expect that kind of activity here in a few minutes. All right, keep us posted. You bet. All right, thanks. Police are now telling us that the official cause of death for 40-year-old Corey Terlicki was murder. But they're not releasing the manner of her death. Her body was found Sunday by a friend inside her Southside townhome. Police are trying to determine if a person of interest, 22-year-old Landon Luigi, is a suspect in her death. He's in custody in a southern uh, Minnesota jail after being arrested yesterday on a parole violation. 
Investigators believe that Luigi and Turlicky may have known each other. Fargo police are trying to find out who's behind a Snapchat account that has been harassing teenage girls at Davies High School and threatening violence. Court documents say back in March, officers received a complaint that three girls at Davies received snaps from an account called Jason Eddy 5. These snaps included threats such as, I will bring a gun to school if you don't show me your nipple, and do you want to get stabbed? Send nudes. Now there's a student, uh, there is a student named Jason Eddy at the school, and he came forward to the principal saying that another student created an account in his name. Investigators are looking to Snapchat to provide them with account information for Jason Eddy 5 in the hopes they can pinpoint who is behind the messages. And we invite you to tune in tonight to Valley News Live 10 at 10. Crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson will have much more on this story. A man is behind bars tonight in connection with a stolen vehicle case. Moorhead police arrested this man, 23-year-old Zachary Gilbert. Police say they were notified of the stolen vehicle this morning. And when officers approached the vehicle, Gilbert rolled up the window and locked the doors. That's when police smashed the driver's side window to let a canine unit inside. Gilbert tried to fight off the dog and received bite injuries to his foot and torso. He's facing charges of felony auto theft, assaulting a police canine, possession of drug paraphernalia, possession of marijuana, and possessing stolen property. The city of Fargo is asking for your input on a major road project set for next year that will impact thousands of drivers. A meeting is just getting underway at Ed Clapp Elementary School to discuss road construction along 32nd Avenue South. Valley News Team's Krista Baim has more on this. Krista? Mike, Andrea, I'm standing along 32nd Avenue South, right in between those two truck stops, the Flying J and Loves, where there's a lot of semi-traffic, a lot of people making their way home right now as well. Now this time next year, they're hoping to break ground on a project that would widen this section from 42nd Street to 32nd Street to six lanes. And that includes construction of widening that bridge over I-29. Now again, that project wouldn't start until next spring, but that public input meeting is going on right now where people can address their concerns, especially businesses. And it's at Ed Clapp Elementary School until seven o'clock. And though teachers and parents may not be directly impacted in front of the school, they will be impacted as they make their way to and from this time next year. Again, that input meeting is until 7 o'clock tonight. I'll have much more from that coming up tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10. But for now, Krista Bame, Valley News Live. All right, thanks so much, Krista. The North Dakota DOT says if all planning is set, they would begin the project next spring, but it could be delayed until 2018. The city of Bemidji is moving forward with a massive $100 million downtown development project. It's called the Rail Corridor Development. It'll take place here on city-owned property on either side of an abandoned railroad line that runs along the south side of downtown. In part, it will include parks, commercial, and living space. It will be one of the largest development projects in the city of Bemidji's history and will create a whole new neighborhood on the south side of downtown. Well, we're doing the rail corridor redevelopment is a uh, 26 acres of land on the south, what we would call the south side of downtown, south end of downtown, uh, a former rail corridor, as the name would suggest, uh, an area that has been underdeveloped uh, for, for decades uh, and has now recently made it available to developers. The Bemidji City Council has already approved environmental cleanup work for the rail corridor project. It's expected they will begin selling the land to developers later this year. Voters in the Detroit Lakes Public School District are heading to the polls for a special election today. They're deciding a $63.5 million building referendum. A similar proposal was voted down twice before. In November, it failed by just 123 votes. Now, if passed this time around, the school district plans to use the money for renovations and upgrades to current buildings and adding a new middle school. The school district says if passed, taxes would increase $19.08 per month on a homeowner who has a $150,000 home. Polls will remain open until 8 o'clock tonight. It's Tuesday, and that means it's time for another restaurant report card. Tune in tonight to Valley News Live 10 at 10, and we'll dig into which restaurants in Lakes Country have a clean plate and which ones you should perhaps avoid this summer. 
New trees are going in along sections of the Red River. Later on Valley News Live at 6, how they eventually will help the area and how you can get involved in future planting. A gorgeous day in Fargo. Our current temperature of 70 degrees beats those in Denver, Amarillo, Santa Fe, even Los Angeles. The mild weather gets even milder. I'll have hour-by-hour -hour details in your forecast right after this.